Hi guys, welcome to the second part in this video series on writing a bare minimum chess program in C. And in this part I'm going to cover the board representation as well as the piece encodings. So, uh, the, there are various board representation systems available among the chess programmers and one of the fastest uh, array-based system is called hexadecimal 88. There also exist uh, some sort of bit boards for implementing the chessboard representation, but that's the completely different story and quite complicated one either. So I'm not going to explain in deep details uh, about the hexadecimal 88 uh, board representation. If you are really interested in the theoretical details, you could have found them in this site. These are the Bruce Morland's pages. Bruce Morland is one of the most notable chess programmers ever and his uh, chess programming theory is stored at webarchives.org and I'll put the link into the description below the video. So this is the detailed explanation of the hexadecimal 88 system. And I'm going to cover this only from the practical perspective. And as this was already mentioned in the first part of this video series, that it helps uh, with the using of a single if statement to define whether the square is on board or it is not. So you have to just uh, perform the bitwise end operation of the square number and the constant value of hexadecimal 88. And here another thing arises, it's the bitwise operations. You really have to be familiar with the bitwise operations in C and all the required information could have been found in this simple uh, Wikipedia article that covers all the basic bitwise operations. And uh, this would allow you to understand of what's going on in this uh, particular series for lots of bitwise operations are gonna be used but uh, when I was learning to code and I didn't uh, read uh, kind of books uh, I just I didn't really want to start to learn to code I just wanted to write a chess program one day this was for about three years ago or something and then I found a video series by Blue Fever Software, which is called the Chess Engine in C, which many of you has probably already found on the YouTube. And there, when the it was about some bitwise and uh, and or some bitwise operations, uh, the uh, man who has made this made that series. Uh, he he covered the bitwise operations right in the video and I want to follow his example because uh, in order to explain some terms related to the piece encodings uh, really requires understanding some bitwise operations so our board is uh, represented as a one-dimensional array of exactly 128 uh, elements and the first 60, f well not the first, well the, the s visually it is represented as two-dimensional array, but from the computer's perspective it's a single line of uh, digits. Yeah. So the left part, uh, left 64 squares repre represent the actual board position, while the right part represents the positional scores, and this was already covered in the first introductional video. So please check this out if you want to know a bit more details about this. And uh, these numbers here are the uh, encoded values of the pieces. And these values are not random, and they are designed to be the mo to, to make it the most easiest way to define whether the piece is black or white, or to extract the piece type using again the bitwise operations. And uh, the original information about this particular piece encoded can be found here in pages of H.G. Muller in his uh, tutorial on Micromax Minimalist Chess Engine. So, uh, 
let me start some explanations when we talk about the uh, binaries then we, we we have some bits yeah and say the rightmost bit is like the first one and we go then in this order in real life this might not be like so for the the big end and little end in uh, orders uh, to represent the bits in the number but it depends on the architecture but that's not the point now so the first uh, uh, bit uh, is worth of 1, the second worth of 2, then 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and so on and this means if we say we have this number yeah, so this uh, value is set to 1 that we know that the value of this particular uh, number in binary in, it, in order to convert this into decimal we look here and we see that this is just 1 yeah, we s look at this at this number and the bit eight, or this is called the eighth bit. Yeah, the eighth bit, it's actually one to f it's the fourth uh, if come from here, but it's called usually the eighth bit. At least Adrian Miller uses these explanations. And as far as this bit is set to one, this means that the value of this particular number represented in binary in decimal is eight, and. Uh, uh, what happens here? We perform some bitwise OR operation, and uh, this is the how we actually do it. So if we want to uh, perform the bitwise OR operations on these two numbers, then the resulting number would be this one. And if you don't understand how this is going on, take a look at this explanation or take a look at this Wikipedia article, which would explain this in greater details. And now we um, uh, we can see that this number has to be converted to decimal, and we see this is worth one, and this is worth eight. And now we have to add all the uh, bits that are set to one. So eight plus one is nine, and that's the value of the white pawn. And uh, just exactly the same for all of the other pieces uh, can be viewed over here. And what are these? Eight, so a thousand is a decimal eight, and the ten thousand is a decimal sixteen. It's not actually ten thousand; it's actually one zero 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 zero, and so this is one zero zero zero, so on. So uh, the color in this uh, particular implementation is represented. Uh, if the bit eight, if this bit is set, then this means that the color of the piece is eight, and if this particular bit is said that this that the, then the color of the piece is black and also here is a virgin bit but it's involved only when we are talking about some uh, castling and uh, and uh, in peasant captures as far as we're not going to cover in this I'll just remove it for this scheme was taken from my earlier engine that did actually perform some in peasant capturing as well as, well as castlings so uh, to encode the piece, uh, th so, so the piece encode is c encoding consists of two major parts. The first part is uh, this num these numbers repre represent the type of the piece, and so the queen is the type. And if we just bitwise uh, bitwise or uh, then uh, seven with eight, then it would result number 23 and this uh, represents the white queen on board and if say we bitwise or this 7 with 8 that it would result 15 and uh, the 15 represents the white queen on the board Th this is the black queen uh, maybe I said the white queen this is the black queen and this is the white queen so here 15 this means that on the square d1 a white queen is standing occupying this square uh, and this is need to understand uh, in in the further parts how do we extract the type so in order to extract the type of the piece we have to perform the bitwise end operation of the piece and uh, if we have the value of this piece and we we bitwise end this number with seven then we would have, uh, in th as, the as the result, we would have the piece type. 
and this would uh, uh, would serve in some cases as a, an ar as an array index for some uh, places in the program along along the program and uh, if we actually try to bit by end uh, this particular number with number of 15 which in binary looks like so that this would allow us to obtain the index in this array and this array rep is, is, is used to print the uh, board on screen and this array uh, is using ASCII characters to represent pieces on board I will also show how to use Unicode symbols but uh, for now this is available on the Linux for I don't know how to make it on Windows I don't have a Windows machine and uh, I have no idea how to do this okay and this is the map of either this particular array or this one so this means it goes the first empty square when then we skip one square then the black pawn and see this is 0 1 and now it's 2 so the type uh, of black pawn this is 2 and then it goes black king three four and so on but also uh, this uh, this values are not the the raw type but they are already like a pieces and we would perform some little math in future in the springboard function in order to get uh, the index the particular index in this array so as an input we would have a uh, encoded piece value and uh, as the output we would have a particular index in this array to represent the correct piece on board so we say we are in this square and we say that the, value, the encoded value of this piece is 13 that you should have print white bishop so it would res in the result give this index okay and now let's see the printboard function itself uh, I'm not really going to type the code to save the time I, the explanation takes a lot of time as well so I will just uh, go in this manner I will be preparing the code uh, to the video and then briefly explain what it does in order to give you an idea of what is the particular order of building this particular chess program and uh, how uh, what what are the stages of uh, building this program so the very first thing we would like to see and this uh, would be also needed for uh, debugging uh, information for providing some de debugging information so we need to print board so this is the void function it has it doesn't return any value and uh, we what we do here first we loop over all of the board squares and then uh, forget this line for a while for a while let's see this line here so we want to print a character one of these characters and we just uh, uh, here we ask if the square is on board if the square is off board then uh, add 7 to it so this means like we are going around the squares we are we are in this square number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and now we, are, we found ourselves in this, uh, in this uh, uh, index 8 and this is all board and uh, as far as this is defined we just add 7 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then we found ourselves in this uh, index number 16 so we are on board again that's a tricky way to make the print board function very uh, c very uh, tiny uh, from the perspective of code size and uh, here we want either to print the new line or the actually the one of these pieces so in case if we find ourselves off board then that means that we have already printed the characters for all of this particular pieces and now we're here so what we need to do here is just to print a new line so this is the new line printed in case we find ourselves off board and in all the other cases we actually have to print some piece so we now we are now referencing 
the pieces uh, array and uh, the board square is the uh, content of each particular uh, square on board and uh, we have to perform this bitwise end operation with the constant value of 15 which was explained before in order to obtain the index of a particular corresponding letter to the given piece and now let me just compile and run this program to see to to show you how this actually works so I'm using the GCC compiler on Linux uh, you could have do the same or you could have used any IDE this is the one file engine so it's really easy to compile and run and here we see the board has been printed no additional information has the site to move yet so just uh, a, a more like human representation of this array over here so that's how the our chest position looks like this is the initial position and of course the positional scores are not printed here and now to make it a, bo a bit more readable and uh, um, like kind of more understandable if we command this line and uncommand the Unicode representations for the pieces and also shift these two lines then we get the same uh, version but with the Unicode pieces so these are the white pieces and these are the black so if you made the uh, if you shift the colors of the console of the uh, on your Linux terminal then this would be actually white while this would be black well basically these are transparent okay guys this is it for uh, this part I hope everything uh, explained here here is clear if not then please see the references to the more detailed explanations that would be in the description below the video or feel free to ask your questions in the comments and to be honest um, I'm not uh, uh, in along this video series there would be some kind of white spots some places that I understand what they do but I basically have no idea why this happens how it works so I'm just a code monkey and I'm not teaching you how to code or, or something I just want to share my own understanding of how to write a chess engine and uh, just to, to make it a bit more clear well at, at least uh, this kind of maybe like a code monkey understanding but but still I consider this to be good for beginners well you might have argued but nevertheless okay guys see you in the next part have a good time